In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can retrieve indexes, and we'll be creating a select statement with multiple joins. I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. In the previous video, we had a look at sys.columns, and we had a look at how to create a query with multiple joins. So we've got here two joins, and we're retrieving three columns. Now I'm actually going to add a few more columns to this from sys.objects. I'm also going to get the object ID and I'm also going to get the column ID as well. And what we're going to do is use this query in another query that we're going to develop in this video. So first of all, I'm going to go to a new query and have a look at two different system tables. The first one, is called sys.indexes. And if you have a look at that, we can see the object ID. So you will remember from the previous video about object ID. So it is a number that corresponds to an object, which has an object name. We've got name of the index. We've got whether it's clustered or non-clustered or heap. And we've got some things which are bit. So I have a zero for no and one for yes. So is unique, is primary key, is unique constraint, fill factor. So if the index has been reboot or recompiled or what the fill factor was, if it's zero, it's a default value. If it's above that, say 50, then it's 50%. Whether it is disabled. And then finally over here, if you're using Azure SQL database, whether it has been auto created because Azure SQL database can auto create indexes if it thinks there's going to be an improvement in performance. So I'm going to just have this as one of my system tables, but the problem is it doesn't tell you what the index is on. So what we've got another table called index underscore columns. And this says what the actual columns are. And you'll notice that all we have is the object ID and the index column ID and the column ID. So we looked in the previous video about object ID and column ID. So object ID three and column IDs one and three, well, that would be RSID and HBCOL ID. So I've got two tasks. The first task is to combine these two together because here we can't see the name of the index in index column IDs. We can't see the type. So let's do that first. And then secondly, what we need to do is incorporate the results of this query into here. So we can see what the actual columns are. So to join these together, fairly easy. We just do a join. So I'll take this one first because it's got more rows. And you can see object ID happens twice for the same object ID. Why is it only happens once here? But we've also got an index ID. And we may find as we go down that there is more than one index ID for a particular object. So what we need to do is do a join based on both of these columns. So I will say join. And again, as just like in the previous video, I will use aliases. So I'm using IC for index columns and I for indexes. And we are joining them on object ID and on index ID. So what I want to retrieve is everything from here. So the IC dot star. But in addition, from this table, we want the name. So I'm going to call this index name and I'm also wanting the type. So get type description and that is the index type description. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So we can see that this index CLST is based on object ID three and has two index columns. Okay, so now let's try and get these columns. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste what we developed in our previous video. So what I need therefore is to retrieve 
RSID and HBCOLID plus the object name and so forth. So what I can do is use this as a query inside this select statement. So I will join and all I do is put a bracket around it. So it's a very complicated query, but it matters not. It could be encapsulated as a view, of course. So there is my query. And I'm going to call this C, because this gives me all of the columns. Now, how does this up here correlate with this? Well, it would be the object ID and the column ID. So we say on I see object ID equals C object ID and I see column ID is equal to C column ID. So let's execute that. So there's no differences because I've not yet put what I want from here. So what I want are these columns. So I'm going to just format it like this and add in a comma and put this information in as well. And we can see, oh, there is a problem because we no longer have a reference to this table when it comes out of here because all of this then just becomes C. So what I need, instead of having this lot, I just need to refer to C dot object name. I need to refer to C dot type description and C dot column name. So what I do therefore is get rid of all my formula because the formula is down there and I just put C dot at the beginning. So now let's run this. So now we can see that the object sys.sysrscalls has got an index called clst, which has got two columns in this. And if we go down to here, sys.sysallloc units has got two indexes, one with one column, so that is a clustered index called clust, and one with a non-clustered index called nc. Now, if I scroll down to one of those columns and tables and indexes in AdventureWorks 2014, we will see that we've got person.address and that has got four indexes. And so let's just have a look at person.address and have a look at indexes and see if this is right. So first of all, we've got a clustered index called pk underscore address underscore address ID. So that is that one. And that just has the one column in it. So if I double click on this, we can see it's got address ID. The next one is a non-clustered one called AK address raw GUID. The next one has got all these five different columns. So let's just go into this index, double click on it. And here you can see are the five key columns. And then finally, there is a fourth index. So this looks like it is bringing all of the indexes that we want. So in this video, we've had a look at how to retrieve a list of sys.indexes and sys.index columns. But we've also had a look at how to join the results of a query. And this is great because what I can do with this query is just execute it itself and have a look at it and then look at the outer query and execute it as well. So it allows me the best of both worlds. It allows me the original query unaltered and then I can use it in the main query. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.